Welcome to Encounter Shawnee Mission. I'm Jonathan Wilson. And I'm Marlia Campbell. First, let's take a look at the Watchdogs program. It engages fathers in their children's education by enlisting them to volunteer one day at their child's school. East Antioch Elementary hosted a Watchdogs pizza party to do just that. East Antioch hosted a Watchdog pizza party where students and their Watchdog volunteers bonded over pizza and conversation. I'm the top dog for the Watchdogs program here. Um, essentially what we do is we reconnect fathers with their children, we bring fathers and father-like figures into the school. They spend a day at the school and uh, get to go out to recess with the kids and help with remedial math and reading. And um, it, it also has the extra advantage of having added security in the building. So. This is my sixth year at the school. Um, we have my oldest, who is in fifth grade this year, so it's my sixth year. It's my first year as the top dog in the program, but I've been very active in the program ever since we first got here. It absolutely benefits the kids in the sense that some kids just don't have a, a male role model in, the, in their home. So having the ability to come in as a dad, not just as a teacher, but as a dad, somebody essentially an outsider to the school, they're able to come into the school, um, they see this father-like figure, and it helps those who don't have a father at home have a better understanding of what's appropriate behavior and for those who do have a father at home it's just cool to have a dad come and play you know, soccer with him or go help him with some math it's somebody that's just not a teacher it's just great with photographer jonathan Scholl, this has been jesse wilkins reporting for encounter shawnee mission what a great way for fathers to spend time with their children i couldn't agree more Broadmoor Technical Center offers a plethora of specialized programs for students looking to expand their technological horizons. Here's a look at two such programs. Broadmoor Technical Center offers unique classes that give students the opportunity to explore a variety of different career paths. Today, we will take a look into two of these unique classes. Uh, well, the game design program is kind of an offshoot of the Multimedia One program, uh, which was canceled a few years ago, and um, the the, the subjects that I taught split out into their own classes. So game design is one, and then 2D animation, and then 3D animation. The 2D animation class is kind of an art, it's more of an artistic class. Students uh, make 2D animations, they tell their stories, they make up stories, and then tell them through uh, animation techniques. We learn about the principles of animation um, and how to tell a visual story. Now the 3D animation is a little more technical. Um, we do kind of the same thing there, but we add that third dimension. And when you add that third dimension, it's a lot more technical and they learn the skills necessary to um, uh, make a very realistic view of something that doesn't exist. When we talk about like what makes a good game, like all the points of why it's like addicting, why people want to play it, all that stuff. And then we learn to program and make our own games like we're doing now and we get to like design everything, draw it out, it's really awesome. I'd like to describe all the classes I teach is where creativity and technology meet. So they are learning how to design games that people want to play. And uh, that's one of the, the big uh, focus is making something somebody else will enjoy playing. And at the same time, bring the visual creativity skills, problem solving, and uh, even mathematical skills to bear in their work to create something that, first of all, works really well and that other people like to play. With photographer Sam Herschel, this has been Jonathan Wilson reporting for Encounter Shawnee Mission. Isn't it great that we have a school like Broadmoor where students can pursue their specialized interests? Bullying has always been a prevalent issue in elementary schools across the nation. Let's take a look at how Comanche Elementary bettered its students' abilities to deal with and stop bullying situations. Students at Comanche attended an assembly where they learned about how to prevent bullying. The assembly focused on appropriate behavior inside and outside the classroom. This is my third year at Comanche and the program has already started. PBIS is a uh, positive behavior intervention support system and it's vertically aligned with Westridge Middle School and Shawnee Mission West. So everyone knows the West way by the time they get to be freshman and sophomore. So that is more of an umbrella program, and inside that we try to focus on focus lessons. 
how do we behave in the hallway, how do we behave in classrooms, and a part of that is bullying. And as we know, growing up, it's happened in the past, it's happened now, it'll happen in the future, but trying to teach kids how to handle it, how to be, how it's okay to be a reporter and not a snitch, when, and knowing the difference between tattling and when there's a real report that needs to be made. And the, the bottom line is safety. We want kids to feel safe and comfortable in school. As a student at Comanche, Amelia Sapp notices bullying in her life. Yesterday, um, these, peop um, these people were like taking gum and spinning it out on people and smushing it on people on like you. Emilia finds Principal Lowe to be helpful in bullying situations. As last year, um, as I was being bullied and um, so I told him and so he fixed the problem. Students are rewarded with prizes for their good behavior. There's a drawing, sometimes you went, you can, the teacher just picks like maybe a wee party or a popcorn party or movie. Or you can like sit on your desk for the whole day. With photographer Anna Carlin, this has been Marlia Campbell reporting for Encounter Shawnee Mission. Students at Pawnee Elementary are lacing up and running for PTA. Here's a look at the Pawnee Panther Prowl. This is our fourth annual Panther Prowl. So the Panther Prowl is Pawnee's fall fundraiser and it's our biggest fundraiser of the year. So to get the kids excited, we have them run laps and then they raise donations that help the PTA fund school projects. All students participate and we have each grade participate in its own time slot. And we invite uh, students from Shawnee Mission West to come and cheer the kids on as well as parents and grandparents to be cheerleaders. Well, they have fun, and they also have the opportunity to win prizes uh, through the money that they raise for the school, which can range from pizza street gift coupons all the way up to a tie-dye party and then the ice cream party. One student was asked about what he did today. Um, we were jogging. We were jogging? How come? Running. Running to get those fans and getting exercise. With photographer Emily Bider, this has been Katie Miller reporting for Encounter Shawnee Mission. And that was the Pawnee Panther Prowl. Try saying that three times fast. Football is big at Shawnee Mission West. The annual watermelon scrimmage gave the team a fun way to kick off the season. Once a year, the Shawnee Mission West football team celebrates their first week of full contact practice with the annual watermelon scrimmage. The watermelon scrimmage is a, uh, no, typically it's a scrimmage we do with the first Saturday we get pads on. Um, we invite the parents to come out to kind of see the progress the boys have made the first week of practice. Um, this year we did it on a Friday night just to change it up a little bit. Um, but, but basically the same thing, to get our kids together and, and kind of show what we've done the first week. This year we involved the, uh, the youth teams and I was very happy with how they responded to that. And I think we had a great crowd here and and kind of trying to create a little family atmosphere. Um, we've, I think we've always had it at the West community, but just football-wise and the little kids to, to bring themselves and, and maybe aspire to want to be up here one of these days. I do believe everybody but second and fifth grade were here. So that's, that's a great, especially for the first year and really, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of short notice, I guess. So it was, I was really happy with the turnout. Since we were making this uh, a community event, we thought we'd raise some uh, donations for harvesters, and I do not know how many of those buckets we filled up, but I, uh, it looks like they're, they're pretty full, and it's very, just shows the West community how great it is. With photographer Emma Santi, this has been Marcus Dilley reporting for Encounter Shawnee Mission. Westridge's ELL Night is an opportunity for English language learners to come and find out more about their school. Here's Skylar Stuge to tell us more. 
Hi, my name is Skylar Suki. We're here at Westridge Middle School at ELL Family Night. Let's see what the families are doing. ELL Family Night at Westridge is an opportunity for families that might not otherwise connect with the school or the school environment to have an opportunity to come up to, to the building, um, spend some time, learn about some community resources that are available. We've provided a meal for them. Uh, it's really a great opportunity for that. Uh, that segment of our, of our student population that might not otherwise understand a little bit about the school or what's available for them in the, in the West Area community um, to be able to, to take advantage of some of the resources that are offered. Try to help a Spanish speaker with the things they never use, it, like Centro, like uh, people need help with the clothing. Um, the people need sometimes they need food, they need uh, things like healthy. Uh, we try to help them with that information and they come here and we give everything, papers and, f and everything about they can use it. I would suggest the ELL program because it can help families who've just moved here with their students so they don't get behind and it's really helpful for uh, anyone who doesn't speak English fluently and understand it completely. With photographer Brandon Baudry, this has been Skylar Stuckey reporting for Encounter Shawnee Mission. Sometimes it's difficult for young students to act appropriately in the classroom. Rising Star provides a way to teach their students the rights and wrongs of classroom behavior. At Rising Star, PBIS assemblies are held monthly to encourage students to be safe, responsible, and respectful. PBIS stands for Positive Behavior Intervention Supports, and it's a school-wide behavior system that um, teaches kids to be safe, responsible, and respectful in all the different areas of the school, such as assemblies, cafeteria, recess, classroom, hallways, everywhere you can imagine we have expectations that we teach. And then we positively reinforce them with Starbucks, which are pieces of paper that they get for making safe, responsible, respectful choices. Any staff member in the building can hand those out. And then monthly, we hold an assembly um, with a special theme to celebrate our safe, responsible, and respectful behavior um, of our students. The rules are there to keep everyone safe and everyone has to follow them. Uh, my favorite part was when I was doing the skit. My favorite part of today's assembly was seeing every little kid smiling at what we were doing and they're probably going to do what we do because we're sixth graders and they're probably going to follow what we do. We have data to support and show that we've had a um, reduction in, in behavior problems and um, it also helps to just create a positive climate and culture in the building where people, it becomes fun to do the right thing and um, teachers, staff and students kind of celebrate together how well we do do and so it's just a real positive influence. With photographer Garrison Coker, this has been Tori Thomas reporting for Encounter Shawnee Mission. Keep up the great work, Rising Star. High school students often like job experience. At Horizons High School, students get a chance to gain that experience. Horizons High School provides students with the opportunity to go out and get involved in their community during the school day. What we have at Horizons is a class called Community Service. Uh, and what the class entails is students go out into the public, uh, and they work a job or learn job skills at the job uh, and return for an elective credit. It gives them an opportunity to put a, a professional uh, in the area that has their own business, put their name down as a job reference that says uh, so-and-so showed up every day like they were supposed to. They, they do a good job of learning the new skills that they were being taught. They were, uh, you know, dependable. They had a good work ethic. When Kids can put something like that down on a resume from a professional. Uh, that definitely helps lead them to have an opportunity to get a job. The program has received a positive response from students, including Colin Delaney. After school, I plan to become an architect, and this would help me uh, somewhat to uh, learn all the tools and everything that would be needed. With photographer Lucas Layton, this has been Aaron Beckman reporting for Encounter Shawnee Mission. Do you play any instruments? No, but the students at Apache Elementary are learning how to play the drums. Apache students got the opportunity to learn drums thanks to a Shari Mission Education Grant. I like to do drumming a lot and doing the drums 
Like in music class, it's a really great way to be able to use the drums. My favorite instrument is the low drum. It's my favorite instrument because for one, when you get it out, it's, it's very lightweight. It's also easy, it's easy to use because the top of it is really small. So almost anyone could use a low drum. I would like to be a drummer when I grow up. I'd like to be a drummer. It kind of takes a while to learn and get used to what you're gonna do when you play the drums because sometimes you have to switch drums and you have to do a um, new thing and you have to get used to it. Um, we started doing world music drumming, um, let's see, six, seven. I think I got the grant for it in like spring of 2008. So it was one of the Shawnee Mission Education Foundation grants. And then, um, so I started, uh, wrote the grant actually for sixth graders specifically. So um, as a way of kind of combining lots of elements of what we're doing not only up in the classroom, but in my room. So there's a component to it that um, has a character education part. And we talk about things like respect and focus and cooperation, um, things that would be kind of like life skills. And then there's the music component, which is the huge part. Um, so I thought it was perfect for sixth grade. And so um, we kind of rotate in and out of doing drumming. So we'll do it for several weeks. And like right now, we're currently working on what would be called Ensemble One. And so it's layering several different parts. And, um, um, and then we'll you know, go on to something else for a while. And then we'll come back to it at several points in the year. Um, not specific performances. We'll do things kind of at random. Um, we'll play for our academic assemblies that we have, and those are once a quarter. And at those, each classroom has kind of a chance to shine, and they'll be the uh, featured class. And that they play kind of our ensembles, like when the kids are coming in, they'll play them when they're leaving, kind of add a little festive atmosphere to our assemblies. With photographer Jack Hunt, this has been Evan Johnson reporting for Encounter Shawnee Mission. And that looks fun. I really wish they had that back when I was in elementary school. Yeah, me too. As students mature, they begin to understand the importance of teamwork. Sixth graders at Overland Park Elementary are participating in activities to help them improve their understanding. We're here at Overland Park Elementary School where kids are doing team building activities. We started team building in sixth grade to basically get them to communicate with each other and learn to respect each other and to work together. It also helps a lot with problem solving because they have to come up with a problem and solve it and their teacher is not just there to give them the answer. Usually try and start out with get to know you activities. So the kids start out um, learning each other's names and actions and things that they like and then we move on to the harder ones. Um, we do a tarp flip. We do things that require them to talk to one another, things where they can't talk, and we try to make them get progressively harder throughout the year. We did a team building activity. Uh, we just stood on a tarp and tried to flip it over. That helps us to like, learn to work as a team together without arguing and stuff. At first I like sort of took control, but then Whenever I started to hear the other ideas of my other classmates, I started to realize that I can't be the only one that comes up with the ideas. We did the back-to-back -back drawing activity, and we just focused on the different ways of giving instructions and how uh, people interpret them different ways, and let them try to give instructions and directions, and then comparing on what they um, heard and what the person was really telling them. With photographer Cooper Arner, this has been Alex Elliott reporting for Encounter Shawnee Mission. Thanks for watching Encounter Shawnee Mission. I'm Jonathan Wilson. And I'm Marlia Campbell. See you next time.